Good afternoon, everyone. Can we all stand as we worship God today? As we worship Him, I want to read from Psalm 100, verses 1 to 3. It says here, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us, and this is the best part, we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Lord, thank You. Thank You for that confidence that we are Yours, God. Lord, we will worship You with our hearts, with everything, God. Lord, nothing can stop us or can hinder us from worshiping You, Lord, from glorifying Your name, Lord. Panginoon, move in our hearts, Lord. We want to experience you. We want to see you, Father. We lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. beginning you were there and I was on your mind and even through the darkest nights I can't I can't deny you are here so close to me your failing love is all I need you gave me it all to rescue me and now I'll free oh, there's nothing more oh, 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 real to me Lord no. Keep it all inside. Your love is pouring out. And every second of my life, I'll shout, I'll shout aloud. You are here, so close to me. Your failing love is all I need. You gave it all to rescue me, and now I'm free. Oh, there's nothing more oh, oh, real to me, Lord. No. Oh, 
lang talaga natin maging grateful eh. Wala tayong ibang pwedeng gawin. <laughs> What we were saying, nothing, no one can separate us. We were saying a while ago, Lord, You are holy, You are holy, holy, holy. And us being sinful, us hindi makapasok, makapasok sa pagiging holy. Gave his one and only son for us to die on that cross. He gave his one and only son for us, for us to be with him, for us to freely worship him, for us to know and live a righteous life. That's because of his love for you and for me ang pagmamahal na binigay niya sa atin. Ang pagmamahal na kahit nagkakamali tayo, we can still declare, Lord, you love me. I know you love me. And today, 
we're gonna do our communion. And doing this is a remembrance of His faithfulness, of His goodness in our lives, and actually His love for you and for me. But for some of you, you, you need to remember, actually every one of us, we always need to remember what He did for all of us. Because sometimes we forget. Sometimes, nababaliwala na natin. Sometimes, ah, oh, namatay si Jesus. But we don't really know the weight or we don't really accept the, the value of what He did for you and for me. If it's your first time here and you're not comfortable, it's okay. But we invite you to pray with us. And if you're here, you can grab your um, elements and sa mga upuan po natin. Oh Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you because you redeemed us from, from our sins. I want to read from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 24. It says here, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25, it says here, In the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We remember Jesus. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's pray. Lord, thank You. Thank you for your body was broken for us. Thank you because of your body broken for us now we are made whole. We can now fully worship you. Lord, thank you for this time of remembrance, Father. Thank you for this time, God, that you are allowing us to remember what you did for all of us. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, the body of Christ broken for all of us. Let's all say, thanks be to God. Lord, thank you for your blood. Thank you because your blood is the only way that could cleanse our sins. Lord, the works, it cannot cleanse our sins. Doing things, it cannot cleanse our sins. But your blood, your blood may cleanse us, made us pure, made us new, Father. That right now, as we would continue to worship you, we would be free and can enter, Father, your presence without any regret or kahit ano kahihiyan. Because of your blood that cleansed us. Because of your blood that shed for us. For us, your people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The blood of Christ shed for everyone, for all of us. And let's all say, thanks be to God. How many of you here are grateful? Praise God. Praise God. You know, this victory his victory when he resurrected it's our victory also 
and that is the reason why we could worship him freely that is the reason why no one can stop us from worshiping him can we all lift up our hands lord thank you because this time as we worship you father we would worship you with our hands with our with our minds with our soul with our spirit with our whole heart father lord thank you kasi yung mga kasalanan namin wala na yon tinanggal mo na yon we are now cleansed because of your blood lord thank you because we can worship you and we can claim victory in our lives we worship you lord in jesus name we pray amen and amen
into my heart when all the earth compares to who you are when all the earth compares to who you are thousand hallelujahs God lift to your name a thousand hallelujahs Give God praise as God, your majestic creator, Panginoon. i 
Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, in your own words, raise hallelujah to God. Come on, we are not a thousand people here, but we can raise our hallelujah to God. Come on, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we worship you. How great you are, O oh God. How great you are in our lives, O oh Lord. There's a lot of reasons for us to give hallelujah, our hallelujah to you, Lord. Our thank you, our worship to you, O oh God. Iba-iba sa amin, iba-iba yung reasons, Lord. Some, you have blessed us with provision. Some, you bless us with healing. To some of us, Lord, punong-puno kami ng problema, but your peace, the transcends all understanding is always there with us. Hindi namin maintindihan, but we are at peace. Puro problema, but you are there. Thank you, Lord, because you're telling your people right now, I am your God. I am seated on the throne, and I am in control of whatever you're going through. I am your God. I created the heavens and the earth. You are my people. I love you. Let's worship God. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for your presence in our lives, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sarap mag-worship kay Lord, no? Before you take your seat, make sure to greet the person beside you. So, welcome to Victory. We exist to honor God and make disciples. If you're, if this is your first time, I pray we we are praying that uh, you may find this place as your church community. If you're not yet connected, you may approach any of our pastors, campus, campus missionaries, or leaders, and even volunteers, so you can be, uh, get connected. Right. So, Victory is part of the global uh, church, of global families of churches and, uh, and ministries. And uh, Victory is also a founding member of every nation, and uh, alam nyo ba, Na Victory has its own seminary, and uh, uh, we have a video here that started uh, last 2021 that uh, we can see a glimpse of what Every Nation Seminary is, is going through. Let's watch this video. Every Nation Seminary exists to honor God and serve Every Nation churches and ministries by forming Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and socially responsible leaders in every nation. Our seminary is now in its third year with 99 students from 35 nations in three cohorts. Together, the students are pursuing a master's degree in theology and mission with online classes throughout the year and two weeks of residential intensives in our Every Nation building in Bonifacio, Global City, every year. Here's a look at key milestones of Every Nation Seminary so far. As we help to equip and empower more leaders, I think that there's going to be an exponential impact, and I'm excited to be a part of that. This feels like the moment when Every Nation gets to shape and form our leaders that is aligned with where we have been and where we are going. Being able to learn together and share all of our strengths with one another seems to be so in alignment with the vision that Jesus had for his kingdom. What I love about Every Nation Seminary is for three years, I have a strategic, purposeful, well-planned path for my spiritual and ministry equipping. But I love that I get to do it with my spiritual family. It's been, for me, very re rewarding to see people from all over the globe humbly learning from one another. As the years go on, as, as every nation grows and as our leaders multiply, they will stay in close relationship even as they go to the ends of the earth. It's amazing to, to listen to teachers who are not just theologically deep and relevant, but who have practiced what they are preaching. Learning in community is so 
strong and so rich in that it adds a lot more than just learning in your own local context with your own people because of what God is doing all over the world. One of the most powerful things about how Every Nation Seminary functions is the global cohort model of learning. Multi-generational, multi-ethnic, multicultural. And I don't know any other seminary that can ever have all those facets together in one room. I love the uh, lectures, I love the academics, but the opportunity to build new global relationships from the more than 37 nations across the globe has really been a privilege for me. It's a life-changing experience, something that I never thought. When I joined ENS, this was not what I was expecting. What is the account of your life? It's not the monument you leave behind. It's the men and women whose lives you impact. Your job is to take what you've learned from one another and from us and to build a platform and a podium for the next generation. None of us are here to build monuments for ourselves. Last year, 2023, we sent a, a cohort of, uh, of seminary students to Cape Town in uh, South Africa. And uh, this year, uh, soon we will have our first seminary graduates. So um, in, on behalf of the pastors, leaders, missionaries uh, of uh, Every Nation Seminary, thank you for partnering and thank you for praying sa ginagawa ni God sa, sa ating, uh, in His kingdom. Now, for our tithes and offering, let, let's welcome uh, Kuya Haynes. Magandang hapon po. Now for our tithes and offerings, let us read from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 12 to 13. And because you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that He swore to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock in the land that He swore to your fathers to give you. We have one thing in common. Lahat tayo may pangarap. At lahat tayo ay mahilig magpantasya. Okay lang yun. Libre naman. Mangarap po. Gusto natin ng maayos na pamilya, magandang buhay, successful na career, ministry, negosyo, and so on and so forth. But why settle in this mere fantasy when you can enjoy this reality? What is the turning point of a fantasy becoming a reality in your life? Basa. And God said, If you listen and obey my commands, I will love you. I will multiply you. I will bless you. Even your children's children. Amen po ba? Mga kapatid, do you want God's best and experience the fullness of His blessing? Obey God now and do not delay. Amen? Let us pray. Father, thank you that a Christian life need not be difficult because you have given us your son Jesus to be an example for all of us. You have revealed your perfect will to us through the scriptures. And you have given us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Lord, we pray today that you give us the faith and the courage to obey you. Because that's the greatest demonstration of our love for you. Obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you again for your generosity and for continually um, giving to the Lord and for his kingdom work. 
enjoy the rest of the service. Thank Good afternoon, everyone. Parang ganda ng boses ko ngayon. Pwede akong kumanta. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, again, welcome to the 5 p.m. service. If this is your... Medyo malakas. Sound check. Ayan. Thanks, Gab. Again, if this is your first time, um, we are so glad to see you in our 5 p.m. service. Again, as a church, uh, we exist to honor God and make disciples. And our prayer is that um, aside from going to church, you would really see this as an extension of your home. And so we hope and pray that you would connect with us. We hope and pray that you would find real friends in this church community. And so having said that, after the service, if you have been coming to church, and if you want to know more what victory is all about, and how, how unique um, our church is called by God to do what we have called us to do what God has called us to do. We would like to invite you in the Acts room. Meron pong room jan sa gilid. Okay, so hindi po siya straight to heaven. Pag kumasa kay Jan, okay. Um, we would like to explain to you um, who we are as a church and what we can do to serve you more. And so maybe you've been coming to church. Ano bang meron sa victory? How can I grow deeper in my faith? Are there services that I would like the church to? Um, uh, may inquiry kayo? Uh, we would love to spend the next 15 minutes after the service in that room. So if you've been coming to church, you want to know more, please visit us there. May konting snacks and our small group leaders will be there as well. All right? And so also another thing is that before I dive in and conclude our series today, um, I would like to uh, ask our cross-cultural missionary to stand. But before that, if you are joining us online, we're going to take the time to cut our live stream first um, because our missionary is assigned in a restricted nation. And so, can I ask uh, Jeff to stand? Pwede ba natin palakpakan si Jeff?
Wag mo akong tutulugan, okay? <laughs> Right. So, umpisa pa lang tayo, parang humihikab-hikab ka na, right? And so, today we are concluding our series, Set Apart. And this is the last installment of this series. And hopefully, um, as we have gone through the scripture and tried to look at ano ba yung sinasabi ng Bible about holiness, I hope and pray that you had a deeper understanding of what holiness is all about. But also, I pray that the Lord um, has changed your perspective um, about what holiness is all about. And so tonight, we are ending this series, and next week we will start a brand new series, Go Anyway. This is our faith series, and hopefully you'll be excited for that as well. But before that, alam ko, uh, last week, medyo nasanay kayo dun sa in-invite natin. How many of you na-bless ka dun sa, ano, sa preaching ni Pastor Francis? Grabe, di ba? Sabi ko sa kanya, bro, um, uh, expect more people to visit your church. <laughs> Kasi talagang natawa tayo sa kanya. I mean, preach a powerful message last week, and I hope that you were encouraged as well. Now, before we dive in, meron akong question nito. Um, and again, um, what I want you to do is to have a little bit of interaction. Kasi baka nasasawa kayo na ako lagi yung nagsasalita. Wala kayong choice na makinig sa akin for the next one hour or maybe less. And so what I'll do is I'll give you the chance to interact with the person seated next to you. And I need you to answer this question. Ready na po ba kayo? Okay, so wala po kayong choice. Sabi mo, sabi mo, walang KJ. Okay. Hindi, kailangan with conviction. Walang KJ. Oh, lahat magpa-participate. And so this is the question, okay? So given a chance to know something about the future, ano ang gusto mong malaman? Okay? So given the chance, given the opportunity to know something about the future, ano ang gusto mong malaman? So, oh, wala pa, wala pa, kayo naman eh. Okay, pag sinabi kong go, kayo talaga, <laughs> excited kayo. Pag sinabi kong go, go start, okay? So, one, two, three, go. Kailangan may kausap ka, bawal kay AJ, ha? Okay. Given a chance. Pag yung katabi mo, walang kausap, pwede mo siyang pansinin, okay? Mabait yan. Tingnan natin kung ano yung mga sagot ng mga tiga 5 p.m. service. Okay? Give it a chance. Interactive. If you're joining us online, pwede niyo pong i-type, okay? Give it a chance to know something about the future. Ano ang gusto mong malaman? Tingnan natin. Okay. Next. Yung katabi mo naman, yung magsasalita. Okay. Bigyan mo siya ng chance. Huwag lang puro ikaw. Okay. Give that person the opportunity to speak. Okay. Given the chance to know something about the future, ano naman ang gusto niyang malaman. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Okay. Stop na. <laughs> Ang dami mong gustong malaman ha, okay. <laughs> okay, now, sige, dito muna. Okay, dito muna sa side na to. Okay, given the chance to know something about the future, ano ang gusto niyong malaman? Dito muna sa group na to. Baby girl or baby, baby, girl or baby boy? Uy, grabe ha. Okay. <laughs> na, ano eh, na-bless ng asawa eh. Okay. <laughs> How about this group? Okay, just shout it out. Mahiyain ito mga ito. Okay. Ikaw, okay. Maganda yung sila. Anyone? Ha? Huh? Kung gagraduate po ba? Okay, grabe ha. By the grace of God, okay, by faith, gagraduate ka. Okay? So, palapakan naman natin. Yun yung faith natin ba sa kanya eh. Okay? Baby girl or baby boy, okay? Kung gagraduate ba, how about this group? Tingnan natin. Tingnan natin ito. Ha? Huh? What type of cell phone ang makukuha in the future? Ah, what type of cell phone will be used in the future? Grabe naman. Okay. Doc, Doc Jam, what did you say? Kung kailan na nating si Jesus. Naku, sabi po sa scripture, no one knows eh. Only the Father knows. Okay? So, antay na lang po talaga natin. Di ba? So, Kung kailan babalik si Jesus, wala talagang makakasagot. Pero interesting, no? Anong klaseng cellphone kaya yung gagamitin in the future? Para kayang yung kay Iron Man yun, kay Tony Stark, ganun yung dating, di ba? Sa 9am, anong klase ng kotse daw yung gagamitin? 
So baka daw lumilipad na yung mga kotse at that time para iwas traffic. Anyway, how about this group? Ito mukha mababait tong grupong to. Tingnan natin. <laughs> Nagaantay ang kayo, no? Oh, Di ba? Anyone? Hindi talaga ako titigil. Oh. Hanggang 7.30 tayo dito. <laughs> Sila yan, ha? hindi ako. Ha? Okay. Oh, anyone? Future family. <laughs> okay, bro. <ha>? Okay. <laughs> okay. How about this group? Kailan magkakabalikan? Si <laughs> Pia Kung kailan do, if ever, magkakabalikan ba? Okay. Or kung kailan man. Okay. Ito, konti lang kayo dyan. Two, four, six, eight. Sampu lang kayo dyan, ha? Okay. Anyone? Loto. Loto. Okay. <laughs> Sino po nagdi-disciple dito sa batang ito? <laughs> Again, <laughs> Teka lang, teka. Ano ba naman kasi yung mga tanong mo, Pastor JC? Okay. Again, many of us would want to know something about the future, but the reality is this. None of us holds the future. We all know who holds our future. Tama po ba? And the only one who knows what will happen sa ating kinabukasan ay sino po? Si God. Diba? But did you know that there is something in Scripture that we can read, that we can see clearly what will be the outcome of our life? So meaning to say, at some point, we know what will happen. I know what will happen to us as believers. The question is this, do you know what will happen in your life? sa future. More than loto, more than what kind of phone, more than baby girl or baby boy, what is in it for us in the future? And so today, yan po yung pag-uusapan natin. Ano ba yung itsura ng isang buhay? Ng buhay ng isang kristyano? Ano ba yung buhay niya after living here on earth? And so this evening, we're gonna talk about Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 7. And here, it gives us a picture about the outcome of our lives as believers. And so, it's clear in Scripture, ano ba yung destination natin? Kung naniniwala ka kay Lord, this will be your destination. But on the other hand, ano ba yung outcome ng buhay ng mga taong hindi naniniwala sa Panginoon? And so, as we end our series, we're gonna look at this text. I wanna read this to you. And so, if you could stand the night and open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. We'll read verses 1 to 8. Revelation is the last book in the Bible. Chapter 21 is the second to the last chapter in your Bible. It says here, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. In verse 2 it says, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Lord, we thank you because your word, it is indeed a life. Your word, has power. 
And Lord, would you create in our hearts a sense of urgency for us to tell others about who you are and about what you have done for us. Lord, open up our eyes to see that you are the God who restores, that you are the God who can turn things around. And Lord, tonight, we ask that you would speak to us. We ask, Lord God, that you would take away any hindrance, any distraction, just for us to be able to hear you. Lord, would you bring not just knowledge, but transformation in our lives through the preaching of your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me take your seats. Now, just a quick context about the book of Revelation. Many of us, pag tinitignan po natin yung book of Revelation, sometimes we get scared reading this. You know, parang, okay, may mga dragon, may mga kung ano-ano, and you think of parang, what, what is this, di ba? Do I take this literally or do I take this symbolically? And again, some scholars would say there needs to be attention when we read this. Okay? We cannot take it literally as it is, but somehow there are symbols that represent what will happen in the future. Now, the author of this um, book is the disciple whom Jesus loved. Alam naman po natin, si John. He was in Patmos, he was exiled there, and here he received a vision from God and the letter was addressing the seven churches back then. Again, the churches back then were experiencing extreme persecution. The cult was prevalent. And there was this one ruler that was demanding the people to worship him. And so you see that there was extreme persecution. And interesting because the churches, pag binasa niyo po yan, many of them were really discouraged of what was happening. Most of the disciples probably were dead at this time. And so could you imagine what were they going through? And so, this vision was given to John to encourage the churches. And I was thinking about that. I asked myself, and I want to ask you today, sino po dito naka-experience ka na ng discouragement sa buhay? Taas ang kamay. Taas ang kamay. Na-discourage ka na at one point in your life. Yung mga hindi po nagtataas ng kamay, paano po nangyari sa inyo na hindi kayo na-discourage? Diba? All of us, we get discouraged. And you know what? The beauty about being in a church community is this. Pag may discouragement po na kinakaharap ang isang Kristiyano, nagpapasalamat po tayo dahil may mga kaibigan tayong sobrang encourager. Right? Talagang kahit ano, kahit gano'ng kabigat yung pinagdadaanan, you have that one friend that can find something good in your negative situation. Tama. Now, how many of you, you have a friend like that? Right? How many of you talagang na-appreciate mo yun? But you'd notice in terms of the encouragement, if you are believing for healing, let's say, diba, He will encourage you about your current situation. Tama po ba? Right? And so if you're believing for provision, that person will encourage you about your current situation. If you are believing for provision, sabihin niya sa'yo, alam mo, maniwala tayo kay God. Let's put our faith in God that He can provide for us because ang heart ni Lord is for us to experience His blessings. And so He addresses or she addresses our present need. But interesting because as you look at what the church was going through, God encourages them through John by talking about not just about their current state, but God gives them a picture of what the future holds. God gives them a picture of what eternity will look like. And so you see the magnitude of the encouragement. It talks about what is in the finish line. And so if there is a discouraged church for whatever reason, God reminds them, hey, there is a finish line. This is what the future holds for all of us. So don't give up. And so imagine kung tayo po yun as a local congregation, dumanas tayo ng matinding unos, dumanas tayo, uh, may kinaharap tayo ng matinding problema. Could you imagine God would encourage us, encourage us by talking about the end? the finish line. And for us, wow, it makes sense. And so, the encouragement came that way. And so, John saw a vision. God gave John a vision. And I want to read this to you. Sabi dito in 20, chapter 21, verse 1, Then I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now, pag binasa niyo po yung revelation, ang dami pong nakita. Ang daming nakita ni John. Uh, ang daming nakita ang vision ni John. Ang daming pinakita ni Lord sa kanya. But here, I want to zero in on verse 1. To it and look at what this vision means for all of us today. Sabido, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
And so, pag binasa mo dito, sabi dito in verse 1, si John merong nakita. A new heaven and a new earth. A renewed creation. Some would argue na, okay, yung new heaven and new earth na yan, it's a totally new creation. But some would say, it is a renewed creation. Meaning to say, kung ano yung nasira in the garden, inayos lang ulit ni God. So, different school of thoughts. But the point is this, it was something new. So again, hindi talaga natin malalaman until it happens. Just like yung question doon, kung kailan ba talaga babalik si Jesus, hindi ko po masasagot. And I, would, I don't even dare want to answer that question because it's clear in Scripture kung sino lang ang nakakaalam. Now, how many of you gusto mong malaman? Ay, ako gusto ko malaman, di ba? I mean, for all honesty, di ba? But here, it's clear that the new heaven and the new earth, it's something that He saw, but the first heaven, where we are today, sabi dito, and the first earth had passed away. Meaning to say, nawala. And so as I think about that, how many of you, when you read this verse, it reminds us that everything that we have here, it's temporary. Sa totoo lang. I mean, narinig na natin to sa, sa mga magulang natin, narinig natin to sa mga lolo natin, narinig na natin to i-preach ng mga pastor na kahit anong yaman mo, hindi mo madadala sa langit yan. Tama po ba? Yung 1-5 natin sa bank account, hindi po natin madadala sa heaven. And so when you think about that, the earth where we are today, where we are, it had passed away. So yun yung nakita ni John. And so as I think about this, I got reminded of where do I look today? Ano yung values ko? What motivates me? Again, I'm not saying na wag kayong magtrabaho. I'm not saying na wag kayong magsipag. I'm not saying na wag kayong mangarap. I mean, si Kuya Hain sinasabi niya kanina, libre lang mangarap. Right? And so I'm not saying that don't do all those things, but we need to understand that as much as we desire to gain many things here on earth, we have to embrace the idea that whether we like it or not, whether we agree or disagree, whether we accept it or not, it will all pass away. Jesus in His words, sinabi niya, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. And so if there's anyone, anything eternal, it's God. And His Word. So, yung katabi mo, mawawala din yan. I mean, hindi naman tayo nagmamadali. Di ba? Hindi mo naman, Lord, kunin mo na to, please. Di ba? Hindi naman. <laughs> di ba? But all we know is that we live here temporarily. Tama. And we need to embrace that. Kasi the reality is this. Tomorrow is not promised for us. Some of us, okay tayo. But tomorrow, hindi natin alam. Baka kukunin tayo ni Lord. But Lord, wag naman, okay. Mahal ko pa yung pamilya ko. Diba? And so, we do not know what the future holds. And here, John was reminded that everything that we have here, it's temporary. And so, I need you to look at this from the eyes of faith that I hope and pray that as Christians, as believers, we don't just invest in the temporary things but we put our minds, our hearts, and our lives to something that is really eternal. And so here, hopefully, it encourages us to think beyond what we see, to think bigger, to think beyond what we have, but we think eternally today. And in verse 2, sabi niya dito, hindi lang yung, hindi lang yung, ano, hindi lang yung passing away of the, the first heaven and the first earth yung nakita niya. He also saw the new heaven and the new earth. And he also saw in verse 2, a holy city. He saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So ito daw yung nakita niya. There is a new city, the new Jerusalem. And you see in scripture how John describes this. Ang daming description, pero pinili ko lang yung tatlo. What kind of city was this? It is a holy city. A holy city. And not just a holy city, it was a prepared city. Remember John chapter 14? Pag naka-attend na po kayo ng mga memorial service, we always share this verse. When Jesus was talking to His disciples, Jesus was talking to His friends, sabi ni Jesus, He was malapit na siyang mamatay. And so, kaya usap niya yung mga kaibigan niya, sabi niya, don't be troubled. Okay? Mamamatay ako. I will get crucified. And sabi niya, I will go ahead and prepare a city for you. So, yun yung sinasabi ni Jesus. 
So ito daw, prepared city for us. So it's holy, it's prepared by Jesus, but also it is a beautiful city. Sabi doon, it's like a bride prepared for a groom. How many of you nakaten ka na ng wedding? Meron ka bang nakita na bride na mukhang kawawa pagbukas ng curtain? Diba? I have never been into a wedding where paglabas ng bride, parang naawa ka sa bride bigla. Hindi. Every time the bride would show her face, pag lumabas na yung curtain, ay pag lumabas na yung curtain, pag lumabas na siya dun sa curtain, pag nakita na yung mukha niya, yung groom umiiyak na. Si Servin, nung wedding niya, okay. Umiyak ka ba? <laughs> hindi, hindi. Ako nung wedding ko. <laughs> napuwing lang ako, napuwing. And so, That's how beautiful the city is. Yung picture, it's like a bride prepared for the groom. If you're single today and you're getting married soon, be excited for that. But this city, holy, prepared, and beautiful. But as I was looking at this, as specific as these descriptions are, sa totoo lang, hindi naman po talaga natin makikita fully ko anong itsura nito. That's the reality. But here, God gives us a glimpse. And so I want to ask this question to everyone. What will it look like when the story of redemption is complete? Ano kaya yung itsura ng buhay when the story of redemption is complete? Once Jesus comes back, anong itsura? What will happen to us? Again, tinanong ko kanina, di ba? Ano yung itsura? If given a chance, ano yung gusto mong malaman? Kung meron kang opportunity to know something about the future. Iba-iba. Iba-iba yung sinagot natin. Yung iba, gusto kong malaman kung sino yung mapapangasawa ko. Yung iba, gusto kong malaman kung ano yung, yung, yung kung yayaman ba ako. And so, we have those things. But here, we are given the opportunity to have a glimpse of what the future looks like for all of us. And I want to share this with you. First one is this. What will it look like when the story of redemption is complete? Number one, God shows us how beautiful the renewed creation is. So, pinakita through this vision how beautiful the renewed or the new creation is. Now, pag binasa niyo po yung Bible, what is the first book that you see in the Bible? Hindi po table of contents. Okay. It's Genesis, right? And so, pag binasa po natin yung Genesis, makikita natin how God put order in everything. But apparently, after creating order, sin came in and everything was disrupted. And so, pag binasa po natin yan, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, what do we see? The curse was announced. You remember that story? After sin, cursed. The curse was announced. Pero pag binasa po natin yung Revelation, yung binasa natin kanina, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, the curse is now what? Anong sabi dito? The curse is no more. So from a place in Genesis that the curse was announced, in the last book, sabi doon, the curse is no more. Ang gandang picture, no? Ang gandang contrast. Nung simula, may curse because of sin. Nung matatapos na, the curse is no more. And not just that, same verse, verse 17. Sorrow and pain started. Now, how many of you naka-experience ka na ng sorrow at ng pain? Nasaktan ka na at one point in your life. Sakit, no? Okay. Anyway, okay. Genesis 3, 17, sorrow and pain started. But in Revelation 21, 4, sabi dito, wala nang sorrow and pain. In fact, sabi ni God, God will wipe every tear. Mamaya mo na picturean, uh, Papa P, kasi may, uh, may dalawa pa yan eh. Para, tip na lang. Okay. Kasi ba? <laughs> Tapos pag pangatlo, pipicturean kayo. Ano na lang? Para, mamaya na, okay, makikita niyo ng buo. So God will wipe, <laughs> God will wipe every tear. And could you imagine when I was reading that, God will wipe every tear. And so you saw, you see the, the, the heart of God for His people. I mean, kanina si, si Carla and si Stephen after Stephen preaching at the 11 a.m. service, natapos siya almost 1 p.m. Anyway, okay. <laughs> love you, bro. Okay, so si Carla and si Stephen, they were, they, they were having lunch. And syempre, having a newborn, syempre, alam mo yun, minsan namimiss mo kumain na dalawa lang kayo. So kami ni siya, talagang kinukuha namin si Roy para they are able to spend time and eat their lunch properly. Pero si Roy, for some reason, alam mo yun, parang hindi okay yung mood niya kanina kasi nagugutom. And so kinukuha namin ni siya, iyak talaga siya ng iyak. And so kinukuha ni siya, umiyak, sabi ko siya, ako na. Pagkuha ko, lalong umiyak, okay? <laughs> and so you see the tears. And so as I try to see that, 
Sabi doon, because of sin, there's sorrow and pain. Pero, in this new creation, in this new heaven, in this new city, sabi, God will wipe every tear. So, yung tears na nakikita natin ngayon, yung, yung luha na lumabas sa mata mo, yung luha na pumatak, sabi sa Bible, in this new heaven, new earth, new city, God will wipe every tear. Gandang picture, no? And not just that. Genesis 3.19, death was first announced. Now, makikita natin Genesis 4, yung unang murder na nangyari. But in Genesis 3, mababasa nyo dyan, in verse 19, death was first announced. Thus shall you come? And then, sinabi din doon. And so, Genesis 3.19, but in Revelation 21 verse 4, there will be no more death. Again, no more death, no more pain. I mean, lahat ng back pain natin, wala na. Diba? Wala nang diabetes, wala nang sakit. Diba? Wala, Sherbin, wala na tayong back pain, bro. Alam mo yun? Praise God. Okay. No more pain. But not just pain, no more death. We will be with God forever. I mean, kanina we were worshiping God, pwede na tayong hindi tumigil eh. Tama? Pero at some point, we have to stop. Kasi the word has to be preached. Some point we have to stop because kailangan niyo pang umuwi. Kasi may pasok pa kayo bukas, makikita mo late yung office mate mong favorite mo. So alam mo yan, parang... <laughs> but here, no more death. We can enjoy the presence of God forever. Genesis 3.24, sabi dito, man was driven out the garden. They were banished. Remember that story? Pinaalis sila. Pero in Revelation 22 verse 14, Man enters this new city gate and back restored to paradise. Yan yung itsura. Yan, pwede mo nang picturean. Parang hindi sayang memory. Okay. Man enters the new city gate and restored back to paradise. From the very start, ang intention talaga ni God, it's this. The one in Revelation. But because sin came in, it was ruined. And I, as I was looking at this comparison, as I was looking at this contrast, ang tanong ko, anong kinalaman nito? Kasi yung revelation, future natin yan, eh, ba? Again, di naman tayo nagmamadali. Di naman natin alam kung kailan babalik si Jesus. So hindi natin alam kung kailan talaga natin fully may experience to. But I, this question was dropped in my heart. And I want to ask this question to you. Looking at this, what can we discover about God? Looking at Genesis, looking at Revelation, looking at how it started, looking at the result of sin, looking at Revelation, anong dulot nito? Ano yung pwede nating matutunan about God? Number one, the purpose of God will always prevail. Genesis, yun yung plano niya? Sin came in, eventually it was restored. So the plan of God still remains. And so what does this teach us? Ano yung tinuturo nun sa atin? Yung plano ni Lord sa'yo, it will still prevail. It may look, alam mo yun, parang hopeless, kaya ba talaga? Let me tell you this, if God has a plan, and if God would want it to happen in your life, He will make it happen. Amen. So, plano ni Lord yan, magpe-prevail yan. God remains sovereign no matter what. But also, one of the things that the Lord impressed in my heart was this, that God has the ability to turn something devastating to something that is hopeful. Kasi pag tinignan mo yung story sa Genesis, parang devastating nung story eh. Parang ang hirap basahin, ano may parang labo naman ni Adam. Hindi si Eve talaga yung may kasalanan. I mean, nagsisisihan tayo, tinuturo natin, but it is a devastating story. But as we look at the meta-narrative, the whole picture, we see the ability of God, the heart of God to turn something very devastating to something that is very hopeful. And why did I share this? Because I believe there is something in us, something in your life that maybe you are in a situation na parang feeling mo, napaka-devastating naman ng situation ko, napaka-hopeless na. Let me tell you this, God can turn it around. God can bring it to restoration. Si Lord, kaya niyang ayusin yung sinira ng kaaway. Do you believe that? What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it around for the good. And so when you look at your life today, maybe you're saying, hopeless, 
Pero God is reminding you to look to Him. And He has the capacity and the ability to turn something devastating to something that is very hopeful. And so I need you to leave this place looking to Jesus, trusting Him that He, if He can do this to the entire world, let me tell you this, He can do the same thing to your life. Do you believe that? So yun yung una. I hope you see that. That yes, the renewed creation reminds us that there is future hope, but I also believe that we can look to Jesus and believe for those things even in the present age today. He has the ability to restore and He can do that in your life. Number two, God gives us a picture how He completely made us holy and how we are made to be God's dwelling place forever. Again, pag binasa mo yung scripture, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. And also, this, this new city, man enters it, blameless and holy. And so holiness is complete. No more sin, no more pain, no more death. And John gets this vision that when we enter this city, that when we fully experience this, anong sabi? Si God daw will dwell with man. Walang nagbago sa plano ni Lord. Right from the start, ito yung gusto ni God. Right from the start, ito yung gusto niyang mangyari to have fellowship with His creation. To be with man. To enjoy His greatest creation which is us. And Revelation 21.3 affirms that. Sabi dito, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Question. Saan ang favorite hangout place mo after church? Yung iba, sa ano? Sa Greenfield, di ba? Sa Greenfield, daming option, di ba? Yung ni-rearrange natin lahat ng upuan para nandito tayo sa area na to. Binubuhat natin yung table. I mean, we, we go to our favorite dwelling place, tama? Pag pumupunta ka ng Tagaytay, di ba may favorite kang kainan ng best bulalo? Lahat na lang, they claim that it is the best bulalo in that place. Pero ikaw, meron kang favorite go-to place, tama? Right? Favorite ramen. Sino po dito mahilig ka sa ramen? Di ba? Para makikipag-debate ka na mas masarap ang ramen koroda sa ramen nagi. I mean, I mean, you have your own favorite kape. Ito, usapang kape. Mag-aaway tayo dito. Anong favorite natin kape, di ba? <laughs> And so, we have our own preferences. We have our own favorites. But did you know that God's dwelling place, He has no option to. His favorite or His only dwelling place that He would want to be in, it's with man. In us. Revelation, ganun pa rin. The dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. And I love the next part. Sabi dito, and they will be His people. And God Himself will be with them as their God. And so when you read this, If you read the whole Bible, etong line na to, yung He will dwell with them, they will be His people, and God Himself will be with them as their God, yan po yung summary. Yung summary phrase of the word covenant. So pag sinamarize yung godly covenant, yung covenant ni God to His people, yan yung summary. That He will be our God, and we, tayong lahat, will be His people. And so from Genesis, when this was first mentioned in the story of Noah, yung heart ni God, when He made a covenant with Noah, when He made a covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, with Israel, with Moses, His heart is for the people to be their God, si Lord, and the people to be His family. Yun yung heart ni God. You remember our series, The Road Out? Remember that? Ito yung story ni Pharaoh, not wanting Israel to be free. And ang sabi ni God sa kanya, there were many back and forth conversations. Sabi niya, let my people go. Pakawalan mo na. Ano yung reason? So that they may what? Worship me. Yun yung intention ni God. Pakawalan mo na yung Israel. So that they may worship me. And so yun yung intention ni God. It's a binding agreement between parties. An agreement that has no end. Marriage, more than a piece of paper, it's a covenant between a husband and a wife and God. 
Pero let me tell you this, as beautiful as marriage is, how many of you are married? Taas ang kamay. Happily married. <laughs> Yun, mas tumaas. Okay. It ends. It ends. At one point, when one dies, that's the end of marriage. Don't end it while your spouse is still alive. What God has joined together, let no man separate. But once one dies, marriage ends. That covenant ends. But let me tell you this, yung covenant with ni God, with His people, it has no end. Even in Revelation, makita natin, He fulfilled His covenant. There's no expiry date. Kung mahilig po kayo mag-grocery, kung mahilig kayo pumunta sa pharmacy, di ba lahat po may expiry date? Yung garden niya, na pag nawala yung pang-ipit, kailan ba expiry nito? <laughs> right? Aamoy-amoy, wala pa namang amag, pwede pa to, di ba? Pero, may expiry, tama. Canned goods, may expiry yan. Pag binili mo yan, after 3, 4, 5 years pa yung iba, Tama? And so, may expiry. Medicine. Sana pag naman, pag, pag tapos na yung expiry, wag na natin gamit. Pwede pa to pastor. Mukhang okay pa eh. Okay. Keso. Di ba? Well, yung iba nga, kinakain yung keso kahit may amag eh. Di ba? Para, I mean, to, wala pang amag. Pwede pa to. Okay. It has expiry. But when you look at the covenant of God with all of us, it has no expiry date. And spoiler alert, God kept His covenant. God kept His covenant with man. God kept His covenant with you. God kept His covenant with me. That until the end, God's heart is to dwell with man for us to be His people and Him to be our God. Nothing has changed. Genesis from the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the New Testament, all the way to Revelation. He will be our God and we will be His people. He kept His covenant. And so if you are here today, you are doubting if God has been there for you. If you're here today, you have been asking the Lord, Lord, are you really there? Are you still a God? Do you even hear me? Revelation reminds us that God kept His covenant. Regardless of where you are, God has kept His covenant. And God will keep His covenant with us. Amen? That's the good news. And how many of you are glad that our God is like this? Pwede ba natin palakpakan si Lord? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, that's the good news. And I want to end it by telling you the flip side of this. Kasi as believers, as followers, as someone who has put their faith in Christ, we know the outcome. Tama? We know that we will enjoy His presence forever. Again, I'm not in a rush. You're not in a rush. But we know the outcome. But the question is, is, what about those who did not respond? What about those who don't know Jesus? What about those who rejected the message of the gospel? And again, as I show this to you, I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to scare anyone. But this is something that I cannot escape preaching. I cannot say, ah, I don't like to preach this. Because this might not, might not feel good for people. No. This is the Word of God. And I believe that every word that I see in Scripture, it's God-breathed. It's profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for anything, for training all of us in righteousness. And so that's the Word of God. And so as I share this, I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not saying that we're better than the others. But I hope and pray that as I share what I'm about to share in the next few minutes, it will create a sense of urgency in us. And as we go back to Revelation, as we look forward in the future, I want to give you a picture of the reality. That Revelation 21 
as beautiful as it is, no pain, no tear, not everyone will be included. God shows us that not everyone is included. People will suffer in the lake of fire. That's the reality. And again, not to scare anyone, pero this is the reality of life. Sino po dito naranasan nyo ng maiwan? Taas ang kamay. Taas ang kamay. Naranasan nyo ng maiwan. Okay. Taas ang kali- kabilang kamay kung masakit maiwan. Di ba? I mean, that's the reality. Masakit talaga maiwan. Okay. Buti na lang si Lord hindi kayo iwan. Amen. Okay. Just last Friday, ako po, naiwan. My parents went to a wedding and may family GC po kami. Di ba, pag pamilya, daming GC, di ba? <laughs> di ba, minsan, kompleto kayo, tapos may isang GC na wala yung nanay mo, may isang GC na wala yung tatay mo. Di ba? I mean, kasi for surprise yun kayo naman, no? ano yung iniisip nyo. Di ba, syempre, lang may surprise mo siya na nandun siya sa GC, di ba? So, there are other GCs. And so, my, my parents are sending the photos. Oh, nandito na sila. Punta sila ng Santa Elena. They were attending a wedding. And so, parang sabi ko, okay, ingat kayo. Ay, kasi Friday traffic. Then, I only found out that I was invited in the wedding during that day. So, sabi nung kapatid ko sa akin, nung bunso namin, sabi niya, Kuya, bakit wala ka dito? Invited ka din. Noong una, kala ko, gino-good time lang ako. <laughs> kala ko, gino-good time lang ako until he showed me this picture. May seat number ka pa. So, labasan na po ng full name. Pinakita niya sa akin, ito, table 23 ka. So, ako parang, oh no, nakakahiya. Di ba? So, pag nakita ko yung couple, sabi ko, sorry ah, gustuhin ko man, iniwan ako ng nanay at tatay ko, hindi ko alam na invited ako eh. Pero the reality is this, naiwan ako. But let me tell you this, pag ako naiwan sa mga ganitong bagay, I can apologize and life moves on. Di ba? Okay lang maiwan. Now, pag lumabas ang barkada at naiwan ka, okay lang, life moves on. Tama? Pag nagplano kayo at sabi mong kasama ka, tapos hindi ka sumama, kailangan mo mag-explain. <laughs> but life moves on. Tama po ba? And so, there are certain times na okay lang maiwan, life will move on. But the reality is this. May mga taong may iwan and the punishment is the contrast of what we will experience as believers. Verse 8 tells us, ano yung itsura? Sabi dito, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, yung rendering po ng faithless sa NASB is the unbelieving. That detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion, anong sabi? Their portion will be in the lake of fire or in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now, when we think of hell, nung bata tayo, di ba, we joke about that. Lalo na nung hindi pa natin kilala si Lord. Oo, sa impyerno din naman ang punta natin, sama-sama tayo. Di ba, I mean, we've said that. And when we understood what hell is, parang Lord, joke lang po pala. <laughs> Kasi when you study hell, it's actually a scary picture. Because it's a, it's a place where we will experience everlasting destruction. Eternal punishment. Meaning to say, once we're there, Bible tells us we cannot cross over. So ito, pag naiwan ka, ay, Lord, hindi, hindi pwede, pwede bang change of mind? Hindi. Eternal punishment. Matthew describes this when, when there's fire, ang description of blazing furnace. Mark describes it as when we experience fire, the fire never goes out. So, if na-experience mo ng mapaso, if na-experience mo ng makahawak ng mainit, di ba, ang normal tendency is we what? Pag nahawakan natin, inalis natin, imagine experiencing fire for all eternity. And when I was reading this, sabi ko, katakot. How many of you gusto mong ma-experience to? Huwag ko. Hindi po trick question to ako. I mean, no one. I ask you this. Would you want your family members to experience this? No. Ito, hard question. Would you want your enemies to experience this? <laughs> I mean, I was, we were driving here, I was talking to Gail. Sabi ko, sa totoo lang, ah, even the people that hurt us the most, for them to go through this, parang hindi ko ata kayang lunukin. Yung iba sa inyo, <laughs> ibahin mo ko, Pastor. 
No, reality is this. To tell someone suffering in hell, this is what they're going to experience. Can we actually take that in? Whether it's someone that we love, whether it's someone close to us, whether someone we don't know, whether someone that we hate the most, I, I don't think we will desire for someone to experience this. And so, I was praying a while ago and I was letting you know a while ago that again, I'm not here to scare anyone. I'm not here to say, they're the sinners, we're the more righteous. No, no, no. That's why yung prayer ko is, may this create a sense of urgency in us that we have a part to play here. As Christians, we're not just here for consumption. I believe as Christians, we're here to be the bearer of this good news. Just yesterday, there are 35 people who went through Victory Weekend. Many of them will be, I'll give you a heads up, many of them will be water baptized next week after our service. So hopefully you can join and witness that. And so those are 35 souls publicly declaring their faith and saying they are followers of Jesus. Why did I share that? Because our church is called to make disciples. Our church is called to preach the gospel. Why do we send missionaries to the nations? It's because people need to know about the gospel. Because if they don't hear the good news, this is the outcome of their life. At one point, this was the outcome of our life. This was the direction of our lives, but people reached out. We're here today because somebody explained to us what Christ did for us. And so I hope and pray that this will create something in your heart that you would take advantage of every situation, every meeting, every conversation that you will have with your family, with your friends, and tell them about this great news. That there is hope today. Jesus said in his own words in John chapter 5, 24, talking about his authority, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. So what's, what's the goal? It's for us to believe. It's for us to tell others to believe in Christ. And so I want to ask this question to you again. Given a chance to know something about the future, anong gusto mong malaman? We have our own answers a while ago. But today, the Bible has given us what the future holds for us and for those who don't know Christ. And so, one last question. Now that we know the end point of both believers and non-believers, what will you do? Anong gagawin natin? Upo na lang ba tayo and say, okay, bayaan mo na. Bayaan mo na silang mag-suffer. Bayaan mo na silang ma-discover si Jesus on their own. Kapatid, mali. We have a part to play. It's not just the role of the pastors, nor the campus missionaries, nor the small group leaders. It's all of us. It's you and me together. Amen? Can I ask everyone to stand? You close your eyes and bow our heads for a moment. I want to pray for two things tonight. Again, God has the ability to make all things new. God has the power to bring everything into completion. He can restore something that is devastating today. And if you're here today, you have something in your life na feeling mo hopeless case. Today, I want to affirm you that the Lord knows where you are and the Lord is able to help you in those situations. And so if that's you, meron kang matinding hinaharap and you're saying, Lord, I need help. I cannot do this on my own. Would you lift up your hands and I'm going to pray for you. No looking around. This is between you and God. As you're lifting up your hands today, just ask God, Lord, I need you. Lord, kailangan kita. Panginoon, nakikita mo yung kamay ng bawat isa. Nakikita mo yung kondisyon ng puso ng bawat isa. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil alam namin na meron silang hinaharap Meron silang binibit-bit ngayon na some of them, they've been carrying it for the longest time and they've been struggling and saying, Lord, I feel like there's no more hope. But today, thank you for reminding them that there is hope in you. Thank you for reminding them, O oh God, that there is power 
in you that you can turn things around. And so Lord, as they lift up their hands today, it's a sign of surrender that they're saying, Lord, I cannot fix this on my own. Only you can help me. And so Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters today. Strengthen them. Give them the faith to trust and to believe in you. Put down your hands. And one more thing, with all heads bowed, eyes closed. If, you're, if you've been coming to church and you don't know the outcome of your life yet, some of you, you're unsure what will happen to you after our time here on earth. Some of you, wow, you are on the far end. Na, ito, yung, ito yung potentially can happen to you. And today, you're saying, JC, I need Jesus. Jesus can save you. And Jesus is, is willing to save you. He came to save you and me. And if you're here today, you haven't given your life to the Lord, you want to make that decision today with all heads bowed, eyes closed. If you're saying, JC, I want to my life Jesus. I want to experience Him. I want to be with Him forever. If that's you, with all heads bowed and eyes closed, would you lift up your hands? Thank you, Lord, for that hand. Thank you, Lord, for that hand. And if you're lifting up your hands, pray this prayer after me. Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. I cannot save myself. Today, I give my life to you. Today, I repent from everything the Bible calls sin. And now, would you rule and reign? Be the King. Be the Lord. And be the master of my life. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat. Put down your hands. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we give God praise today? If you prayed that prayer, join us inside and we can explain to you how we can help you. And if you've been coming to church and if you want to know more, what this church community is all about, please join us as well. Some of our leaders and pastors will be there. Could you all lift up your hands before God? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and grant us His everlasting peace. And so Lord, as we leave this place, may we be ministers of reconciliation. May we share to the people this good news that changed our life that eventually will change theirs as well. Lord, use us for your kingdom, for your honor, and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you, everyone. Join us in our Welcome to Victory. We'll see you next week.